Nagatoro is probably a B cup. I mean, tier. B tier. Hi, I'm a kid nut, an anime YouTuber who actually watches anime. As of right now, I've done the impossible. I've officially watched every single anime that's airing this season. Except for, like, a lot of them, but the massive quantity of anime I'm watching right now is enough to make the ultimate tier list everyone will probably disagree with. I read all the comments, though, so if you disagree with my good taste, let me know what you think. According to YouTube, only 28.6% of you have lost your virginity, so make sure you give this video a like for good luck. Don't step on me, Miss Nagatoro is at least a B tier. You might think that's too high, but hear me out. It's arguably the most memorable anime of the season, and one of the few I'll probably rewatch in the future. This sounds kind of stupid, but the opening already gives me nostalgia even though the anime is literally still airing. Ten years from now, I'm not gonna remember how weak the plot was or how faithful the anime was to the source material. What I will remember is the erection I had while watching it. And that erection was A tier. The Way of the House Husband is very controversial and divisive. For some reason, there's no in-between, people either give it a 1 or a 7. This is because the animation, if you can call it that, was made with Microsoft PowerPoint. It's basically just a manga with voiceover, but the studio doesn't try to hide that, and it almost feels like a stylistic choice rather than a non-existent budget. As for the actual content of the series, it's not bad, just pretty average. Don't let your expectations hinder your capacity to enjoy it, though. C tier. Higa Hero is wholesome, it's got a nice story, a solid message, lovable characters and overall it's just good. I know that's controversial to say because a lot of people act like this anime shattered the boundaries of fiction bringing the medium to unimaginable heights but I think it's just pretty good. It's not like it changed my life or anything but it's one of the better anime airing right now. I'm gonna give it an A tier. 86 is an 86 out of 10. It can be confusing at first but I've been sticking with it and it's getting better every week. I did have to rewatch it because I wasn't paying close enough attention but this is absolutely one of the top five series airing right now. Excellent main character, good social commentary, and brilliant moments in every episode, this anime is an S tier without a doubt. Slime 300 is chill, fun, cute, enjoyable, generic, and forgettable. It's the same isekai we've all seen a hundred times, except this time something is slightly different. I happen to enjoy generic isekai, so I've been having a great time watching this, but sadly I'd be lying if I told you it belonged any higher than a C tier. Odd Taxi is criminally underrated. I don't see anyone talking about it, even though it's one of the the best anime this season. The characters are animals, so I think that probably turned a lot of people off, but ironically, they feel like some of the most human characters I've ever seen. It's an adult anime, but not like that. It's just easier to relate to if you're an adult. It's got the best dialogue of the season, and it deserves a lot more attention. S tier. Shadow's House is also extremely slept on. The main character, Emiliko, is the literal peak of anime cuteness. She's extremely optimistic and overly positive, which is a nice contrast to how dark and mysterious the rest of the show is. The music is amazing. It's composed by best boy Kenichiro Suahiro, and everything about this anime has me at the edge of my seat. It's one I look forward to watching the most every week. It could easily be S tier, but because it's a mystery series and nothing's explained until the very end, the score it gets will heavily depend on how good the conclusion is. It's really good so far though, you won't regret watching this. Another extremely underrated anime that nobody's heard of is One Piece. It just started airing recently and it isn't bad, but I do have some complaints. First of all, there's way too much recap. In fact, the entire anime is just recap of everything that happened in the manga. Also, it feels like the opening somehow gets longer every episode, like they've been secretly adding a few seconds every week so we wouldn't notice. They even removed the ending to make room for the opening, and by episode 1000, I predict that the opening will be longer than the episode itself. I don't really get it, but it's an S tier. Another anime I pretend I'm caught up with is My Hero Academia. I'm still on like season 3, but every time I try to get caught up, I just black out and somehow end up in a McDonald's parking lot rewatching watching Arrow Manga Sensei with an erection. Alright, no, that's mostly a lie. The truth is, I'm just not that invested in my hero, but I will get to it eventually. I'm sure season 5 is a banger, but I don't want to force myself to watch it because that might hinder the experience. I'm gonna make a new tier because this also applies to Megalobox and Fruits Basket. Don't let the placement of this tier confuse you though, it's borderline impossible for any of these shows to be lower than at least a B. A show that is lower than a B 
is Eden Zero. Eden Zero is an insult to every other anime with zero in the title, and although it is a lot different and better than Fairy Tale, it still belongs in the same tier as Fairy Tale. Fuck Shaman King 2, this anime sucks. I'm sorry if you're a longtime simp for the series. Maybe the classic or the manga were a lot better. I don't really know. I'm just not a fan of whatever the fuck I just watched. Full Dive is another isekai where the main character gets kinda trapped in a game, except not really. It isn't good, but goddammit, I can't drop this series no matter how hard I try. The cliffhangers are so good, and every episode is super entertaining. The characters and the plot make no sense, but I'm gonna put this in the B tier just for its entertainment value alone. The World Ends With You really confused me. I don't think I've ever seen anything more rushed than the first episode. It was like they tried to speedrun an entire season in 20 minutes. The part that confused me though was how the pacing of the next episode felt completely normal. <laughs> so they were obviously capable of making a decent first episode, they just decided not to. The game this anime is based on is probably a much better way to experience the story, so I wouldn't recommend the anime unless you're already a fan of the game. I found myself liking a lot of things about the characters and the world, so it's hard for me to say this, but sadly, this is garbage. Vivi is the opposite of garbage. It's one of the best looking anime in existence, and it's so much more than what you'd expect if you only read the synopsis. It's written by Best Boy Tape, so there's a lot of ReZero vibes in terms of characterization, dark themes, comedic timing, and the writing itself just feels familiar. The music is good too, and it does make me laugh knowing there's at least one guy out there who really hoped this would be an idol anime like Love Live, but probably ended up shitting his pants about a minute into the first episode. Episode. Vivi has transcended the boundaries of the S tier ranking and belongs only in a tier of her own. You should really be watching this, especially if you want to support the author. However, I do think there is one anime this season that's better than Vivi. It's not up yet, but I'll go ahead and make the tier in preparation. Koikimo is that new rom-com about a grown man that stalks a high schooler. It isn't terrible, but I can understand why someone might think it is. I can also understand why someone might enjoy this anime, but what I don't understand is why the author didn't just go all out. The protagonist is already a pedophile, so instead of trying to normalize that, just take it a step further and make him attracted to his little sister as well. She's obviously best girl and deserves way more happiness than the main heroine does, so why not sprinkle a little incest into the plot? If SAO can do it, any anime can. Give that poor woman some incest, goddammit. C tier. Mars Red is pretty underrated. It's a nice vampire story with good art and awesome music. In the same way as Odd Taxi, it's kinda meant for a more mature audience. I know that doesn't mean much from someone whose online identity is a cum joke, but this anime is good and a lot of you would like it. B tier, give it a try, it doesn't bite. Let's Make a Cup 2 is an average slice of life with a very cute main character. Watching this will make you feel happy inside, and you might even learn about Japanese culture too. It's not good, but it serves its purpose and it's really wholesome. Also, the episodes are only 15 minutes, but that's still longer than One Piece without the recap. Super Cub. I think I'll go with the soup, thank you. This is the other new slice of life, and it's literally an advertisement for the Honda Super Cub, except for some reason, it's kinda good. It's like when the sponsored mobile game is actually fun to play. I expected this anime to be a chore to watch, but it ended up being a surprisingly enjoyable slice of life. B tier. Combatants Will Be Dispatched was written before Konosuba, so the author was still figuring out how to write a good parody, but he didn't fail by any means. There's a lot of funny moments, and it's definitely entertaining. The character are decent, I love the shotgun lolly, and this anime is the perfect way to kill time if you're bored. B tier. SSSS Dina Zenon. If you couldn't tell from the title, this anime really wants to be S tier. But sadly, that's not fucking happening. It's not D tier bad, I'm enjoying the waifus at least, and the animation is decent sometimes. Contrary to popular belief, I actually think this is better than Gridman, but neither anime really impressed me that much. This is better than the average mecha, so if you watch a lot of garbage mecha anime, then this one's gonna feel a lot better than it actually is. I'm loosely giving it a C tier, if the ending's good, it could move up, I don't know. Zombieland Saga Revenge. Brace yourself, because this A tier may surprise you. This is season Two of the only idol anime that doesn't make me feel ashamed after watching it. Aside from maybe the art, I don't think this is better than the first season, but it's still awesome. Whoever thought up the idea of zombie idols definitely needs a raise. The music is good, there isn't a single character I dislike, and I just get happy every time I remember a new episode's coming out. I've made this joke already, but you don't have to be a fan of idol anime or necrophilia to enjoy it. The Slime Diaries is a rare example of a spin-off that not only supports, but also improves the main story. Other 
rather than being an adorable slice of life, it rations out much needed development to some of the side characters that were neglected in the original. Because it recontextualizes parts of the main story, I'd actually be inclined to give the original anime a higher rating after watching the spin-off. As an individual anime though, it's just a decent slice of life, above average, enjoyable B-tier. The Saint's magic power is omnipotent, is a refreshingly unique take on the isekai genre where the MC is a normal person and the story is realistic, but sadly my ADHD is far too powerful to not find it incredibly boring. I'm sorry, I just can't help that. I don't want to misrepresent how good this anime is, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier, even though I would personally rather watch most of the anime in the C tier. This one just isn't for me, but objectively, it is pretty good, so I would still recommend it, even though I wasn't a fan. Osamake, rom-com where the childhood friend won't lose. Yeah, I guess the title was accurate after all, because spoiler alert, this guy has a lot of childhood friends. I've been bamboozled into watching another rom-com harem that I refuse to drop, and let me tell you, it has not been pleasant. While there are a variety of decent moments in this anime, there were also moments that made me cringe in parts of my body that have never cringed before. Can't wait for the next episode, though. Reluctant C tier. The Kaguya-sama Love is War OVA reminded me what it felt like to watch a good rom-com. It was like Viagra for the soul. Er, no, just regular Viagra, really. This OVA is unironically more fappable than actual hentai. My boner is still at full mast several hours after watching it, and even though it's May right now, I've already lost No Nut November for at least the next 15 years. On a serious note, this OVA was a lot weaker than a normal episode of Kaguya-sama. It's just fan service presented in a comedic way that amounts to a good episode overall, but compared to the quality of the rest of the series, this wasn't up to par. Even as an OVA, though, it's still Still better than most of the anime airing this season because Kaguya-sama is just that good. I'm gonna give this an A tier. To Your Eternity is better than Vivi. This is where a lot of you will disagree with me, so as a reminder, my opinions do change all the time, and if you'd like to share your own, I will read all the comments. To Your Eternity left a much larger impression on me than anything else this season though, and every episode is movie quality. This is what anime was always supposed to be, we've reached the final evolution of the medium, and series like this are the reason of Taku exist. I'll probably have an entire video about To Your Eternity going public soon, but it's basically just a really good story with a super interesting premise and some meaningful themes backing it. The first episode is maybe the best first episode of any anime I've seen, so definitely watch it if you haven't yet. This show could be a contender for anime of the year, it's just fucking amazing. So I'm a Spider is B tier. It's one of those anime that sometimes takes away your brain cells, but always returns them later because it feels bad. It started airing last season, but it's still ongoing and it's unironically better than most isekai. How not to summon a demon lord season two, or as Noralities calls it, re-zero. If you're watching season two of this, then you already know it's a generic isekai harem with an overpowered MC, yet you refuse to drop it because titties. This is an actual male power fantasy and I love it. I don't feel guilty for enjoying this type of anime, and neither should you. Nothing wrong with C-tier. Finally, Tokyo Revengers. This one's a lot better than I expected, in fact, it's one of the best this season. There are a lot of ReZero vibes, and the opening is absolute fire. If there's one anime I could use time travel to watch the rest of, it would be this one. S-tier for sure. And that's the tier list, everyone. Take a fat look at it or pause the video to see where you disagree with me and make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What's your favorite anime this season? Did I miss one you've been really enjoying? Let me know. And while you're typing your comment, please allow me to plug my Twitter. I just, I just want more followers, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying spring 2021 because next season probably isn't gonna be as good. I need to go outside or something because I've been watching way too many anime. I'm out for now though. Keep talking about anime. Peace. Thank you.